Welcome to week seven. Thank you all for joining us today. I have uh, Jamie McQuaid and Jessica Hyde with me. We are going to be covering Jamie's week five question, and then we're going to talk about the, the week seven question. You're going to issue out some trivia this week. We actually have uh, the director of our solutions consultant team, Craig Guyman. He actually wrote the questions for this week, so we're going to be issuing that out. Unfortunately, he couldn't join us today uh, due to scheduling conflicts, but that being said, I'm going to read his question and uh, we'll be issuing that out. So we'll go ahead and just kind of jump right on into it. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and Jamie, if you want to kind of walk us through your question, if you'll kind of you know read through it real quick and then kind of walk us through because uh, definitely, I think a lot of people, uh, you, you brought the heat on week one with the Linux. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm glad some people answered it because uh, I was really, you know, I didn't think you guys invite me back if nobody answered it. So that's good. <laughs> um, let me just share my screen here. So there we go. Let me know when you guys can see that. We can see it. Axiom. All right. Um, so the question was, what is the original file name for block 107374182.5? And so I've I've got the images loaded up here in Axiom, and I've got the I'm I'm in the file system view because we're going to spend a bit of time in the file system view to start things off. And you know what? Easiest thing, that block. Let's search for it. You know, quick, easy way, just search for it from a file name standpoint and see where that gets us. And we go down, put on recursive view here to view all subfolders, and we got some hits. Good, that's a great starting point. Um, we can go through, there's some meta files and the block files, and there's a few copies of them, but they're generally all the same files, same size, and I, and I believe the hashes match as well. It's just in, it's stored in different uh, locations on each node. Um, so we can see, yep, there's a, a file of interest block. Okay, that. That might be our file. Well, you look at it, you can preview it here. And some of you guessed and thought, hey, I recognize that file. That looks like sources.list. And that's what you answered. And I loved every <laughs> moment of it. Um, every time you answered sources.list, I'm like, nope, that's not the right answer. But you guys put it in there. And it was really fun to, to watch that. So uh, it does look like sources.list, but that is not the original file name for this file. This is the content of the file that we are looking for, though. So this is the first easy way to get into it. You can see um, we've got a few different locations here on the source, um, but generally, you know, they're they're scattered on the, uh, the drive there. So um, that's a good starting point. Now, we're looking at this and we're like, okay, we know Hadoop's on here because the question was around uh, Hadoop. It had, had some play on words around uh, Hadoop there. So um, I know nothing about Hadoop forensics, and I'm sure a lot of you don't either. Well, I, 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 I've never investigated Hadoop. So what do we do when we actually have to investigate something we don't know? We Google it and we go X forensics and we just put the word forensics at the end of it. So you Google Hadoop forensics and see what we get. And so this is literally what <laughs> so I did true. for this. I literally did that exact same thing. Luckily, a Google search, one of the top results is uh, Sans' uh, presentation from Kevi Fowler, um, and with that, which ended up being the hint that we put in later that week, is uh, a really good presentation from Kevi. Good Canadian kid. Um, he's done a lot on databases and that. It's it's a random coincidence that he's Canadian as well, but whatever. Um, <laughs> we'll go with it. So his uh, really good uh, research walkthrough. That video will tell you everything you need to know to answer this question. So that's why we put it as a hint. We knocked 20 points off if you didn't find it on your own, but that actually is the way to do it. So one of the things he talks about are transaction logs and file system details in Hadoop. And so we're looking at this and we go through, great, um, block isn't what we need there, but what we'll do is one of the files he mentions is edits. So let's do a search for edits. I'll put an underscore there because I know there's some underscores and eliminate some noise there. Let's get rid of our old search. And we get some edits files. These are very interesting. And as Kevi explains it, these are transaction logs. These are done in Hadoop in the transaction logs because the files can be spread over across various nodes and, and whatnot to go through it. Now, if we go to the source for a lot of these, they're going to be into user local, Hadoop, Hadoop 2, and we'll, we're just going to go to that location. Um, I can grab these files, but I'm going to show, I want to look at uh, a few other ones as well. So let's go user, um, we're going to local, Hadoop. I've already got it already open here, so that saves a lot of time. So we go to the current folder and we will get rid of my edits 
and we'll see all the other files that show up in here because there are some other important ones. The ones we want are the edits ones, so jump ahead here. But the FS images are good as well. And in, and uh, Kevy goes into that uh, quite well. Is um, These are going to be snapshots of the actual um, image. And then these are going to be the transaction logs. And nicely, if you sort them, you can see there. there's the edits in progress, which is the latest one. And you've got edits. And they're numbered. And these are just what transactions are in each of them. This is at um, transaction one and two. This one's three to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all the way down to the in progress 127. Now, if you look at them and we go down to the hex and text, there's nothing really exciting about it. There is some stuff in there. And if you know what you're looking for, the answers are technically in here, but you're not going to be able to piece it together just by this. So well, how do we figure this out? Well, what I did was I copied these files out and Jamie, I just saved. I'd like to mention that you gave unlimited attempts. I did <laughs> so give going, unlimited attempts. Going through I, those edits logs is actually fair game. Yep, absolutely. And a few <laughs> other people actually found other transaction logs and were able to piece that together as well. I'm going to go through the full gambit because it's not always going to be oh, that absolutely. easy. And I wanted to make it uh, at least uh, show people how it's on. So I'm just going to say logs and go. And it saves them out. So I've copied them out. Now, the next step I took was, guess what? We're not going to use a forensics tool for this because there's not many forensics tools that actually do um, Hadoop forensics for us. We've gotten the files we need. Now we're going to get into using the native tools. Don't worry, you do not have to build your own Hadoop instance, but you do want to go download Hadoop and grab itself. Now, I've grabbed them already. Um, if I drag this over here, um, Hadoop 3.3 was the version I grabbed. The main reason I'm grabbing this is just to get the tool. So I go into bin here and there's uh, Hadoop CMD and HDFS CMD. Those are the commands that you want to start using to parse through this. And Kevy goes through some of this in this video. So definitely um, worthwhile getting going with it. So I'm going to move over to command line here now. I'm using PowerShell, but you can use pretty much anything you want there. But um, I've put those um, current files in this location. So we can see here, there's those edits files. And I grabbed um, the FS image ones as well, just uh, when, I, when I grabbed them separately. But those are going to be the ones we want to go through. Now, if we look at the Hadoop files, or and I, now if you didn't set this up before, Nobody likes using Java, but you use Java for this. Um, Hadoop uses Java, so you have to set up Java in your environment, um, which was probably the biggest pain for me for the whole thing. But <laughs> HDFS version, and we can open that up. We can see Java's running in here, and HDFS, which is the Hadoop command tool, is in my path, and I know how to use it. So we can go through, and we can we can take a we can take a look at. Um, a lot of the tools and see what they actually offer. We can go through this, but the, the actual application or tool that we want to use is called OEB. So HDFS, OEB, help. And if you take a look at this, this is the file we want. This is going to be offline edits viewer. Well, we got some edits files that are offline. Let's use, let's view them. That's, that's really it. So uh, HDFS, um, OEV and it needs an input and an output. So we're going to do uh, I for input and we're going to do edits. And I'm going to cheat. There's about 10 or eight or so um, edits files in here. The one we want is this one, transactions three to 10. But you could you very quickly, there weren't many, so you can very quickly go through output. The, put the output to a file, just say file1.txt. But I'm just going to put verbose and we can put it on the screen here. Scroll down, there's the output, a nice clean output of the edits file. And I scroll up here, we go through. Now, Kevy talks about opcodes. These are helpful in terms of identifying what happens. Here's the start of the log segment, transaction ID is three, um, and here's the first record. Mm -hmm. OP make directory, it makes a directory called text. Cool, keep going. OP add, mm -hmm. all right, there's a path, there's a file called apt source underscore copying underscore. This is the answer, but we don't know that yet. We don't see how that's tied to block whatever that long number is yet. Keep going. And we can see OP allocate block ID. Well, 
there's the block ID. It's a, it's a, that looks a little more familiar to us, but we still don't have, we can, we can assume or guess that there are side uh, associated to that file, but we don't know that yet based on the transaction. Well, let's keep going. OP add block. Okay. Now this is the first record that ties apt source dot copying to the block ID. This is your answer right here. Now I did allow you guys to give you two answers. I allowed either apt source or apt source dot copying. This is the true answer, but if you see a few transactions, one or two transactions a little bit further down here, there's the close and then there's an op rename dot underscore old. And there it is. You can see apt source copying gets renamed to apt source. I gave you three a little bit of a bone and said I would take either one of these answers, but so it was a good mix. Some people got one or the other. Um, but uh, I don't know. This was a really fun one. I knew nothing about Hadoop going into it. Um, hopefully, um, you guys learned a little bit about it as well as I did. Yeah, Jamie, that was so awesome. I love the exploration of these OVE logs and getting into some native Hadoop tools. Like, really cool. Brilliant. I loved it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for uh, inviting me, guys. Yeah, that's uh, I love seeing the walkthroughs and obviously the write-ups as well, because I do believe some uh, people found it different ways, Jamie. Is that right? I didn't even know there was another log that would have shown that. And uh, yeah, I think a few people got it and it, it broke my heart a little bit. But uh, I, either way, they got the answer. That's the whole point in forensics. There's many ways to solve a problem. And yep. uh, if you did it this way, you get the extra uh, um, bonus just me being happy about it. If you did it the other way, you got the points either way. I love the fact that there's so many ways to do each thing. I mean, reading reading the blogs each week, like, blow my mind. I love it. Yep, absolutely. That was our week five. So that was our first week of Linux, which uh, definitely, I will say, set the bar pretty high. With that, though, I'm going to go ahead and issue out the week seven trivia. So this one, I dug deep for this one. But on August 27th, 2012, JAD Software released a video highlighting features from a recent software release. What was the third search keyword from Emule, and what was the file offset in that video? So I'm going to give you plus 10 on this, plus 10, because you are going to have to dig a little bit uh, since we're going back to JAD Software. Jamie, were you, you weren't here yet, That would you? be even before my time, I think. That's, uh, that's pulling out the archives right there. Yeah. <laughs> Eight years ago. Yeah, so August 27th, 2012, JAD Software released the video. What was the third uh, search keyword from email and what's the file offset? Uh, so that is your trivia. Everyone gets, uh, you know, one guess. Post it in Discord. We need both the search keyword and the file offset for that as well. So keep that in mind for your guess. And with that, I'm going to go ahead now and read off the week seven just challenge question. And this week, like I said, this is from Craig Guyman, and we're doing things a little bit different this week. So I know Jamie uh, challenged everyone for week one of Linux, and then Mike definitely did not help with the second week. Craig, we're going to, you know, Everyone is at a different level. This might be easier for some or more difficult for others, but the week seven challenge is actually going to be three parts, three mini parts. Uh, similar to Mike's, Mike's got a little extreme near the end with a little bit more difficult. This is definitely going to be, you know, three uh, pieces that once you kind of find the general area of where you're working from, you'll be able to kind of work through these questions. Part one is going to be domains and such for challenge seven is what is the IP address of the HDFS primary node? Now, something I want to call attention to when we're talking, especially you know, with the Linux, the Linux image that we're using, we are using the word primary. Obviously, we're kind of changing terminology here. So these questions will be written as that uh, because we are you know, changing that terminology. Obviously, Linux has that built in, so we can't really change that with the image. But with how we phrase our questions, that's what we're going to do. So. What is the IP address of the HDFS primary node? And that first question will unlock the subsequent questions as well. So the uh, part one is worth 15 points. You will be able to also uh, work through the additional two questions that will follow to continue adding uh, points in as well. So something to be aware of, you'll have uh, a few options here, you know, to get as many points as you want per se, and you know, the sense of the game, uh, you know, 
Hey, Trey. Yeah. Do you mind if I if I make a little comment there because you brought up something really important, mm -hmm. and I just mm -hmm. I just want to speak to the intentionality behind this decision to use the word primary and secondary nodes. There's a couple of areas in our product that we are ensuring that we're changing the language to be more inclusive, not just in the wording we use maybe when we're being customer facing, but in our documentation, in our training, actually even down to the code level. Uh, and it's something that we have a whole team at Magnet that's working on internally for all of our internal communications, as well as a focus on it for our outward communications. And so you not only will you see changes to the use of primary and secondary, but you will also see changes such as the use of block and allow list. Um, and for anybody who's interested in more about those kinds of changes and how important the vocabulary is, I encourage you to check out the Cash Up episode uh, that featured Ladrina Cherney. Uh, who is a big advocate for these types of changes, and we actually spoke extensively about it in that episode. If you go to magnetforensics.com backslash resources, all of the episodes are listed there, so you can catch up on any back episodes or see the links for future ones. Awesome. Awesome. I will make sure we also, uh, you know, tweet that out and socialize that. But thank you for sharing that. That's uh, great news that we are doing that. So keep that in mind when you are answering these questions. The terminology has been changed, but you should be able to still work off of obviously primary, secondary. I think we should all be able to kind of figure that part out. Um, but with that, thank you all. This is week seven. Like I said, we've got one more week next week with a special guest uh, tuning in. That will be issuing out, I believe, the last Linux question. And then we're going to be moving into a new uh, image, and we will get to that. Uh, we might, I guess, we'll announce that next week. So stay tuned for that. And I'm working on the final challenge for the winner. So the winner is actually going to have additional challenge that they're going to have to work through as well. So um, I'm getting pretty excited about that. Uh, but uh, And see you tomorrow uh, if you join us on Cash Up with Brian Moran. Thank you. I meant to bring that up when we were talking Cash Up earlier. So, yes. So, Brian Moran uh, will be on Cash Up tomorrow. And mm -hmm. I definitely look forward to that with the uh, DFR fit and everything else. So, that's awesome. That's definitely something I know during COVID I've been kind of focusing on uh, for sure. So, great. We'll see you all next week. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thanks. Bye.